everyone, this is Rad Tech Shu, and I have my next character review for Battleborn. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at Ombra. Ombra is definitely one of my favorite characters, not only because of her abilities and how good she is, but also because of her unique personality. And we're going to be looking into her personality, her lore, her backstory, her helix loadout. We're going to be looking at everything we can today, and I'm going to give you my overall impression of Ombra and how I think she is best used. So let's get right into her primary abilities. Her basic R2 ability is the Staff of Radiance. When you hold it down, it targets the opponents, as you see right here, and it connects them, and you have to stay real close, but it continuously damages them. And for ever, and for, and the amount of damage you inflict, 30% of that damage is returned to Ombra as health. So if you see that I was dealing, you know, 30 damage, then 10% of that health, roughly, would be returned to Ombra. And so it's fairly good at keeping Ombra alive. It doesn't do a lot of damage and it doesn't heal a lot, but it it's constant damage and that's good. That's definitely good, especially when enemies are retreating like you see right here. Ombra's L1 ability, her first skill is Sunspot. She generates a small orb that damages all enemies in the nearby area and also heals you and other allies in the nearby area as well for as long as it lasts. It has its own health bar. So depending upon how many enemies that it is targeting or how many allies it is healing or whether or not enemies target it itself to destroy it because it can be killed just like Miko's Fungus Among Us ability, it has its own health bar and it can be killed. So the Sunspot is good at healing and dealing damage but it only does 40 damage a second to nearby enemies but it heals for roughly 33 you know, per second. And you can have two Sunspots active at once starting out. Her, secondary, her second skill is R1. It is the Solar Wind. Ombra unleashes a big wave of fire in front of her. It reaches out a fair distance, but not too far, and it deals continuous damage. It does roughly 80 damage for 3 seconds. It is great at building up your heat meter because it is a fan, it is not a singular attack. It is great at dealing damage to a bunch of small enemies, and it will build up Ombra's heat. And speaking of Ombra's Heat, as you notice in the bottom right hand corner next to Ombra's skills, you'll see this little meter. I'm going to go over that in a second, but I got to go over her last ability, which is the Extinction Event. Her ultimate ability, Extinction Event, she calls down a meteor, but it's more like a red crystal or a diamond, and it just sits there for about four or five seconds and then it detonates. When it detonates, it does roughly 334 damage, and then over the next five seconds, the entire area that it exploded in, the radius, it'll have a radius that'll roughly deal damage for the next 5 seconds. It'll deal 20 damage, so it has the capacity to deal a bonus extra 100 damage. Not the greatest in terms of lethality, but it is rather good, especially with an augmentation that I'll show you on later in this video. However, Ombra's abilities, with the exception of Sunspot if I'm not mistaken, I don't believe Sunspot generates heat which is weird, but Ombra's Staff of Radiance and her Solar Wind are going to be the primary methods to generate heat. Heat is, is uh, used for Ombra's basic L2 melee. Her Scorching Strikes are what's used, as you see right there. She, Ombra will expend heat that is built up in her heat meter to deal additional damage. So if you have no heat in your meter and you do an L2 attack, Ombra will do a f base amount of damage. It does, it's very weak, but if you have enough heat, Ombra will expend that heat and Ombra will do bonus damage to her opponents and it is great because it Ombra can get off about four or five melee strikes with her score with her L2 before she, all the heat is fully expended from her meter. So building up heat using the staff of radiance and the scorching and the solar wind is extremely useful. It is very good at dealing damage and is very good at picking putting people away. And one of the best things I love about Solar Wind is that you can target you can target enemies with it that are invisible, and it can highlight them based on an augmentation that you have. But Solar Wind is awesome; it's so much fun. And the Staff of Radiance, although weak, it is great at applying continuous damage, continually harassing your opponents. It is very good, and as you can see right here, it allows me to play Ombra with a, with reasonable aggression. Her last ability is her, is her passive inherent ability, and that is her flame shield. When Ombra's health falls below 20%, she will generate a purple overshield that is that is 300 you know damage that has a 300 overshield. And at that point, when your overshield triggers, at that point, that's your clue to either kill either kill what's you're about you're currently fighting or run the hell away. You know, get away from them. 
So Ombra comes with a lot of ability. She's a great, great player. I love playing as Ombra. She's definitely got. She's definitely capable. She's more than capable of handling herself. And as you can see, Ombra is very good at you know playing aggressive and moving away, playing aggressive and moving away. But anyway, that's going to do it for Ombra's basic ability list. Now we're going to move on to her lore and backstory. First thing you should know about Ombra is that she is a member of the Order of the Sustaining Mother. She is a, what is known as a Silent Sister. Pretty much, I'm not sure what this thing is, other than the fact that it's like its own small little cult, we'll say, inside the faction of Generate. And pretty much, they're... They have their own little creed and stuff like that. They have their own, they have what's known as the vow of the silent sisters. We are the daughters of the Empress, our sustaining mother. Sustainment is her gift to us. To the Empress and to her gift, we now willfully bind our lives. We pledge silence. Our actions shall become our voice. Our science shall become our light. Our service shall become our victory. Any deed, any price. This precept will we uphold. This precept will we sustain forever. So it's rather cult-y or cultish, however you choose to word it, and it's rather concerning because it does generate this, it, it does explain, however, how Ombra's personality traits and that she does feel like she is very high and mighty and that she is better than a lot of other people, and that's because she belongs to a cult and this is how she is taught. So she is, ever since she turned 20, she has been part of the Order of the Sustaining Mother. Now, in terms of her weapon, the staff, that also has some history to it. This staff is not just ceremonial, and it's not just for looks. It is actually what is known as the Solarius Staff, and it allows its wielder to call forth small wells of gravity. In other words, it can use to manipulate the gravity in a small space, and some people, you know, it's, it's also capable, some people say it's capable of being able to pull moons or satellites from orbit. So it also has some gravitational eff effects to it. However, we don't get to see any of that in game. That'd be really broken if Ombra could manipulate the gravity and the, of the map in front of her. All of a sudden, just make it so that the gravity is super intense in front of her and her opponents can't move. That'd be way too broken. But supposedly, her the staff of the Silent Sisters, Ombra's staff of radiance, is uh, very unique and it has uh, magical properties that can allow it to manipulate gravity and not just drain your opponent's life. One other small side note is not just like Wrath, she is also a generous sustain. She went through the sustainment of the generous faction, and like once again, I'm I'm unable to report to you what exactly that actually is. Like I don't understand. Like I don't think we ever had a mission that fully explained what sustainment is. But all we know is that just like Wrath, she is very capable, very adaptable. She is extremely resilient in combat. And Ombra is just one tough bitch. That's really the best way to describe her. Why her skin or appearance looks somewhat metallic, I don't know. Maybe that's just battle armor that was grafted onto her flesh. But I'm not quite sure as to why she has this metallic-y appearance. You know, in terms of her skin, maybe we'll find out more later. Maybe there'll be a mission in the DLC that goes into the Generate Faction's history in depth and, under and explains what sustainment really is and the sustainment engine that is used to do this. But as of right now, Ombra is pretty much a generous sustain, just like Wrath. However, she also has a personal history with Galilea. Apparently from the, in the past, her and Galilea were very close. Now I'm not gonna go too deep into this, we're gonna save this for Galilea's personal storyline because that's where you find out all the details. But her and Galilea have some history together However, Ombra and Galilea are both at odds with one another. They're definitely not on what you would consider on friendly terms. So I'm going to leave, the, leave it at that for now until we eventually get into Galilea's character. And don't worry, I will be working on her and I am looking forward to her character review myself. But for the most part, um, Ombra and Galilea, very rocky relationship right now. The last piece of Ombra's lore I'd like to go over is that she has actually left the Order of the Sustaining Mother. She completely left the faction because when Rendain rose to power, him and the Empress, the Generate Empress, they kind of abandoned the ways of the Empire had the Empire like had traditionally been, including the Order of the Sustaining Mother. And the Order of the Sustaining Mother it worships the Empress. They revere her. She's like 
Id- she's idolized by the by the order of the standing mother, and so they the sisters like Ambra felt that this was a, a betrayal of the highest order, and that the order was ju- that this is, should never have happened. That you know their their ways and their you know pretty much their traditions that this order had had are just being completely discarded, thrown by the wayside, and she could not bear this bear to witness that nor to be a part of it anymore. So she left. The entire Generate Empire, she's gone rogue. Similar to Wrath. Wrath left the, left the entire Generate Empire after he realized Rendane had lied to him and deceived him this entire time. And Ombra is similar in that she left the Order of the Sustaining Mother, resigned from her post, and she decided she wanted nothing more to do with this because of the way things had gone within the Empire. So that's going to do it for Ombra's lore and backstory. Very proud, very noble person, thinks very highly of herself. You can hear that in her dialogue whenever she's playing, whenever you're playing with her. You know, she's always talking about, you know, how vulgar, how disgusting, you're so depressing and stuff like that. She thinks very highly of herself. But what we're going to get into next is I'm going to take it over to the Helix menu and I'm going to show you the basic loadout I've found out for um, how I feel Ombra should be used. Okay, so here we are with my Helix loadout for Ombra. I'm going to do things a little differently. I'm going to go over both Storm Mode missions and PvP at the same time. Just to save up, just to save some time on you know this. That way I don't have to come back to do it twice. Uh, right off the bat, level one, I always go with illumination regardless. Sunspotter, 16% is not that much when you think about it because the sunspots are not doing that much damage in the first place. So a minor percentage of minor damage really doesn't amount to whole mu- a whole lot, and it's only for four seconds. It says right there, increase damage for a short time for only four seconds of the time that the sunspot is doing damage. That's really it. So I prefer Illumination because it catches people on fire. They take continuous damage. It reveals invisible people, like for instance Oscar Mike or DeAndy. You know, if if they catch them on fire, they're going to be highlighted. They don't come out of invisibility, but they are highlighted and easier to spot. So I definitely prefer Illumination over Sunspot for both story mode and PvP. And for yeah, for versus. Next up. Um, Blessings of the Sun is where I go to once again for both I tried Solar Burst and Soothing Sunlight. I just did not like it. Um, Soothing Sunlight uh, did not heal as much as if I had gone with Blessings of the Sun. Yeah, I get the in- health instantly in one big chunk, but it's not as much not as much as if I were to let the so if I were to let the sunspot just sit there and constantly heal me. So if you need health really, really quick, yeah, soothing sunlight can be good. But if you have a little bit of, if you manage to gain a little bit of distance, like you're safely in a corner and you have a, more than enough time to heal yourself, you know, blessings of the sun, you can't go wrong. Solar burst, um, that it's really weak because it would only damage one enemy. I would generate it in a but in a swarm of other enemies in multiple little weak little ads. And it would kill one of them, but it wouldn't deal the explosive damage to all of them. If it did that to all of them, I might consider recommend, recommending Solar Burst, but level 2, I recommend Blessing of the Sun for both. Now here, this is definitely interesting. Blood Drive, Stellar Ritual, and Ceremonial Sacrifice. All three of these are actually good. However, I prefer um, Blood Drive uh, Blood Drive, or, you know, in, uh, what's it called there? In versus, I'm drawing a blank here. I I apologize. I prefer blood drive, just because. And stellar ritual though is a close second. If you don't like blood drive, stellar ritual. Just generate a sunspot and keep constantly, and you can keep that sunspot alive, and it will keep healing you. That is also a good option. But it's not a. It's not that great in PvP. You know, in versus mode. So I would choose blood drive for versus mode. You can go with stellar ritual in the story missions. Now I would choose searing wind in. Uh, versus mode and ritual of repulsion in story missions ritual of repulsion is great if you're swarmed and they got you pinned into a corner you can't get out you just use you just activate your solar wind and Ombra will slam the ground twice and anything even very large enemies will get shoved back a great distance and allow you to get away searing but not all that useful in versus you know it could definitely catch people off guard but it doesn't do as much damage as I as I would prefer especially if my other option searing wind I just constantly keep burning them. I get right up in front. I get right in their face with Searing Wind, and I just do a good amount of damage. If they're like at a third left health, Searing Wind usually finishes them off, no problem. 
Right here, I choose cauterization on verses and story missions. I would prefer the movement speed. That way, if I need to make an escape, I can. I'm a lot. Qu I'm a lot faster. It's harder for melee characters like Wrath or, uh, you know, Wrath or uh, Kelvin or whatever. It's a lot harder for those melee characters who can, you know, outlast me. They can. They, they won't catch me. Flame burst doesn't really do much of anything because the damage it does is so little. It won't take enemies with me if they kill me, so it's not all that great. In my opinion, I prefer cauterization. Next up, we've got... Um, I would prefer just Solar Storm, just so that I can use so my Solar Wind more often. Solar Anomaly is okay, you know, increasing the number of sunspots, but it's not like the... you know, it's not all that great. I mean, it's cool if you want to lay traps, that way if you want to retreat, your opponents will have to go through multiple sunspots, but you want to use those sunspots in front of Amra and in front of the enemies to heal you, to deal damage, you know, I would not, pre I would prefer not to use that, uh, to not use Solar Anomaly or Agile Anomaly, I prefer Solar Storm. Now, right here is Radiant, I would choose Radiant Halberd, it gives Ombra something she lacks, which is range. Whenever she builds up her heat, you can use the Radiant Halberd, and her staff is, shoots projectiles at the cost of heat, but it's very little heat, so she can get a bunch of shots, she can get off like 10 shots with her staff before the heat is fully expired. And there's a little trick to this that Radiant Halberd is just, Radiant Halberd with a special item is very nasty and we'll go over that in my item loadout. Next I would choose Bask in the Light. I would prefer to just constantly be spawning more and more sunspots. Fan the Flames is not too bad in story mode or verses, but for both, once again, I gotta give both story and verses to Bask of the Light. It's just too good. Sunspot is what Ombra does best. It's the best ability she has overall because it is able to heal you, heal your allies, damage your allies, uh, damage your enemies, and it's just so damn good. So I would prefer Bask in the Light for story and verses once again. Next, this one is either or. Howling Wind isn't too bad. Solar Wind's area of effect, you know, it kind of, it, it, you might not notice it, but it actually is helpful. Sweltering Wind is not too bad either, an extra 15% damage, especially if you take, take into consideration the fact that you've comboed it all the way up here with uh, Searing Wind so that you can get bonus damage. So the fact that you can just increase the damage even further with Sweltering Wind is just, it's, it's a great option. Like I said, I love sol using Solar Wind in Versus mode. For Story mode, you can definitely go with Howling Wind just to help clear out waves of adds. You know, it's definitely a good option. So, Howling Wind for Story Mode and Sweltering Wind for Versus. Last but not least, um, this is really either or, I, but I prefer Impact Crater versus World to End. Just because the ability to jet, to detonate, uh, you know, my attack, you know, Extinction Event, when it detonates, it stuns them, meaning where they take continuous damage for those two seconds thanks to... Extinction events uh, after effect of leaving like smoldering remains on the ground and then world's end as you can see Yeah, the smoldering remains last longer But that doesn't guarantee that they're going to be there to take all that damage They're probably going to move and it's actually pretty difficult in versus mode just to get ex Extinction event to hit most people when they see that you know when they see that you know red crystal You know materialize they know they get away especially if they know that there's an ombre on the other enemy team And they don't have an ombre on their team they know that that's a clear sign, like, get the fuck away. So, when an extinction event does hit, I prefer to stun my enemies just to have an increased chance of finishing them off. And that's my Helix loadout for Ombra for story and versus mode. You, she's very flexible, but I think the loadout that I've given you guys right here will help you very, help you out very tremendously in story and versus mode. The last little bit I'd like to go over is some gear that you can use. One thing I found was the Shard of Janar. It's an item you get for ma completely unlocking all of Ombra's lore, but essentially what it does is it says the Staff of Radiance slowly generates its own heat. So that in a sense can give you unlimited shots with her Staff of Radiance. When you use the augmentation, that mutation that allows Ombra's Staff of Radiance to fire projectiles, with that, with the Shard of Janar or Sword Equip, you know, it's unlimited. You can fire them endlessly. I've tested it out over and over. It is endless projectiles like and you know these shots that you see me doing right here it's infinite it never ends it never runs out 
It'll always respawn just enough to get off one little shot, and then it'll just keep going over and over and over and over. So the Shard of Jannar, I strongly recommend you get that by completing all of Ombra's lore. It can be frustrating and tedious, and you might have to do story missions a bunch of times, but it's strong. It's definitely worth it. Another, The other two, um, I would definitely recommend something to increase her movement speed. Um, something that increases her either her movement or her sprint speed, you know, by 10 to 15% or more if possible. And then the last piece of uh, equipment you can do is a vest, you know, some type of vest that'll give her more health oh, and possibly even more healing when she's taking health damage. That way her sunspots and her staff of radiance will heal her a little bit better, keeping her alive just long enough for you to last longer than you normally would have so you can kill your opponents. Very useful, just, you know, it's equipment that can play to Ombra's strengths and allows her to keep up the pressure, keep up the aggression. And that's really what I like to do with Ombra. I like to rush my opponents. I like to get kind of behind em enemy lines, and, but I don't hesitate to retreat. Ombra is kind of like a, a stick, kick, and run kind of character. I stick, it, I stick my head out, I attack, I pop my sunspot, I come in with the solar wind, and then I run away. If things get too chaotic I don't hesitate to pull tactical retreats with Ombra she's very useful in that respect but when you've got an advantage uh, don't hesitate to press it Ombra is very good at pressing advantages and right here you'll see me I want to keep my opponent right here so I get right next to him and then right and I I trigger my shield and then my opponent just does not have a chance because I because of my uh, you know, extinction event ultimate so I mean Ombra is very very good she may not be, she's definitely not the best character in the game, there's definitely others that are better than her, but for, she is definitely a great support character, she's one of the best, you know, her healing is only outdone by Miko in my respect, in my opinion, but she's definitely worthy of respect, she has a very strong presence on the, on the battlefield, and any good player, any player that's good with her is a force to be reckoned with, it's not someone to be taken lightly, if you, if you're good enough with Ombra, you will command other people's respects. Uh, other people's respects, sorry about that. But yes, Ombra, very, very good. Definitely at the top end of mid tier still. In my opinion, I don't think they toned her down or nerfed her at all since any of the betas. And since I first got my hands on her, I liked her quirky personality. She's a little eccentric. And I, and I just love everything there is about her. I don't think there's anything about her I would change. I don't think she needs to be buffed or nerfed in any way, shape, or form. I think she is very good as is but not overpowered and that's really all I've got to say about her game about this gameplay is I strongly recommend that when you play as Ombra you just be patient you get a feel for her she takes a little bit of getting used to but once you do get the hang of her she is dangerous she is very dangerous and she is especially with support she can more than pull her own weight so and she definitely commands respect on the battlefield and I just really can't give her enough praise She's one of my favorite characters in the game, and not only because of her unique personality, but because of her the ability she has to just command respect on the battlefield. And you're going to put up numbers like this very often. Numbers like this uh, with Ombra are actually quite common, at least for me. Um, I, don't, I don't get like 40 kills per game, but anyway, that's really all I've got for this gameplay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, favor, subscribe, comment down below, follow me on Twitch and Twitter, and I will see you guys all later in my next video. This is Radtech Shoe signing off.